So I think it's high time that I finally finish off this cabinet. And so today we're gonna get started on that. It's a bit dark in here, I'm sorry, but I basically need to using the pre-existing structure I've built, build a little double cabinet unit, pulls out from the top and houses my fridge. Now this isn't gonna be the easiest thing to blend with this. So what I'm gonna do is start by cutting the larger pieces first and I'll try to work out exactly how I'm putting it together once I've got the box framework cut up. So my plan is to run the shelf sitting across there all the way across, which means that's gonna have to go and I'll fix down on a straight line through there. Just using my square, just marked directly a line across to the back there. Gives me something to work with now. So with that, the three main pieces that I'm going to be using as the box of the cupboard are now cut out, which means I can get started on the detailed notching that I'm going to have to do around the sides to hug the wall. So using my contour gauge, I've marked out the first line there. Now the problem is that it doesn't need to move in that much. It needs to move into the furthest point here. So essentially, I need to keep marking and cutting until the closest point is touching the wall. So I figured easier than making lots of little cuts on the big piece of wood, it's gonna be a lot better to have one stencil that I can just make one solid detailed cut on my piece with. So I've gone out to Bunnings and got a box for free. Alrighty, there's my two stencils. Let's get into it. I've got my first stencil in there. That shuts against that. Now I've ended up using a compass to get my line better accurate. I wasn't getting good results with the contour gauge. So I think that should be pretty good. Now I just gotta work on this end here. All right, we are going to call that close enough. If I can cut exactly that piece out of timber, I think it will be pretty sweet. So now with that piece there, I just gotta trace it. I'll be using my multi-tool to cut that out. I'll give it a bit of a sand on the edge of the cart just to smooth it out. But look, I'm gonna call that good enough. Just gonna hope it sits in there nice and straight now. So now I'm just gonna test these pieces in there and make sure that that curves up nice and well. So after my preliminary notching, I'm actually pretty happy with how that's sitting in there. If you get nice and close, you can see that it looks pretty snug against it. Obviously it could be better, but I am only a man and this was the best I could do. All right, and here's how it's looking boxed in. So while using the planer to buzz down my shelf, I've hit a weak point in the timber and it's split off of a face that's gonna be seen. So I now have to salvage that shelf out of the last piece of timber that I have left, which is not ideal. But um, I'm thinking with the leftover shelf, I'll still be able to use this as a few other pieces. It's just a shame to have to waste a piece of timber that was nearly finished. So I'm happy with the main box out section now. I just need to work out this top piece and then the upright. So using that shelf that I ruined before, I'm gonna take off what I can from the edge here to use as my top piece. And then I'm gonna fit the shelf in where it fits with what's left of it. So it's really starting to take some shape now. I've got my second shelf cut. Oh, I've got a notch around the roof thing there. So to make this detailed cut, I've finally gone out and bought myself a jigsaw. I think it's gonna make a lot of jobs a lot easier. It's nice to have another tool in the old workshop. A lot better than I could have done and also a lot quicker than if I was still using the jigsaw. So, good purchase. All, right, all my main pieces cut and dry assembled. So now we're gonna start the process of joining. And after that, man, we do some standing indoors. We got ourselves a nice little cabinetry unit.
So I've gone ahead and dry assembled the cupboard in the van just to make sure it's all good. Uh, all the joins are on. Somehow I've marked that wrong and I reckon I've put them in below the line where I was meant to go above. So I'm gonna have to redo that join and I think I'm just gonna glue some biscuits in and then cut them off. So it somehow plugs those holes. So I've now got it finally dry assembled back the way it should be. And now I'm gonna prop it up over here so I can get my first coat of stain on the cabinet. We're gonna get the first coat of stain on this and then leave it to dry for about six hours. All right, this is after coat number one. Just got two to go. You can already see the colors coming out real nice in that. We're now one coat away from being able to install this cabinet. Three coats done. Now I'm gonna disassemble this and put it back together piece by piece inside the van. This is gonna be one of the weirder jobs I've done because trying to install it in a space that only just fits it is something I've never done before. And I need to get the pieces in the right order because once it's stuck together, I don't think it's coming back out. So starting off, I'm just gonna use glue on the pieces, but I'll eventually try to get some screws into the back piece there and through that side there as well. My worry is gluing a piece on and then when I go to put the rest on, I've the angle's off or just something small like that. I think the next piece to do will be this top shelf here. I think this one will have to go last. Oh, So in order to fix the second cabinet down a bit more securely, I'm gonna be using some L brackets and screwing it directly into the floor as well as into the panel up there. So I've managed to sneak a bugle in behind there hidden. And that will fix these two together. So now work on the doors. I'm gonna be making it all out of 64 millimeter wide pine. I've got my two doors cut now. So I'm gonna be using biscuit joints in the side there, just on that line to join them together. As soon as this one's dry, take it out, glue that one up. While I'm gluing that one, I can start sanding this down and get it ready for the first coat of stain. So I'm now getting ready to install the rattan screen onto one of the doors. Now when doing these screens, you want to start off by soaking it in hot but not boiling water. That allows the screen to loosen up and as you're putting it on, will allow you to work with it a bit easier and not have it want things to go back into its rolled up shape. The other advantage of installing it wet is that it'll tighten up and look nicer on the door. Uh, it's been soaking for about half an hour now, so it's ready to pull up, cut to size, and then I've gone out and bought a staple gun to install it to the back of the door. So here we go. So the original time I did this on the other cabinet, I was using a $7 staple gun and it was a nightmare. So I've since gone out and this cost me $20. And as you can see, it's making the job so much easier. So this is one of those things where um, if you are doing a job like this, spend the 20 bucks, get some good equipment and uh, it's really gonna make your life that much simpler. Okay, so now I've got the door. 
I think that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna make a backing to protect it so it doesn't get any holes ripped in it. And I'm gonna spray paint that black so it ties in the cabinet to look a little bit nicer. With the doors installed, here's how the unit looks fully completed. It's come out looking exactly how I hoped it would. I think it ties in perfectly with the other unit. To allow the doors to stay shut, I've installed little magnetic latches rated to four kilograms. I think the completed unit looks rather clean and tidy. And with the addition of two new shelves, it allows for much more storage than I originally had in the van. One of the major features that we were able to pull off was the ability to open and close around my original cabinetry. Another function that I did add to this cabinet was the addition of some little straps to hold up my longboard, which not only allows me to carry this with me and have it out of the way, but I think the longboard acts as decoration and makes the space feel a little bit more like my own. I'm very happy with the final product and the way that it ties into my original cabinetry unit. I don't think there's too much more that I need to say about the cabinetry and I think the final product speaks for itself. With all that said, thanks for watching guys. I hope you're still enjoying the series and taking a bit of value out of me showing you how I've done my van build. About two months ago, we actually hit a pretty major speed bump in the van build, which really slowed things down and threw a bit of a spanner in the works. So the next video I put out is going to be related to that and how we overcame that issue. So stick around because I'll try to make that as entertaining as possible. But in the meantime, thanks for all the support that I've been getting throughout my van build. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to follow along with the rest of the journey. We are so close to being done now. It's actually really exciting. Keep leaving your comments, whether it's encouragement, criticism, or just to have a chat. I'm really enjoying the little community that we got happening in the comment section. Until next time, take care guys.